Hello and welcome to my workshop. In the next set of videos, we'll be doing custom furniture. Recently, I was contacted to make a small scale blanket box and I thought this is a great idea to show you the entire process of designing to building that custom piece. In my head, I have three videos in mind. Video number one is gonna be about the concept, the drawing, the cut list and machining of the wood. Video number two is all about joinery. So we're gonna be gluing the entire piece together. And video number three is going to be putting the finishing oil and attaching any other hardware as necessary. Since this is video number one, let's jump directly into the concept. I was only given dimensions, you know, this is what we want for width, height and uh, depth. So I had to take it and basically some, create some sort of a, uh, a design, an initial stage, so that me and the client can discuss it and make modifications as necessary. So let's jump into Blender and see what I came up with. So this is a pretty standard small scale blanket box, uh, four sides, a bottom and a top. I didn't go as far as creating the profiles for the hinges, uh, but that's gonna be one of the last steps of the project. So I don't really need to spend time drawing things here and wasting my time. Uh, now it might be a good idea one day to do it just for the experience of it. But as of right now, I don't consider it necessary. So this is what it's going to look like. Uh, so my considerations were this. Um, I raised it off the floor a bit so that in case you walk into the cabinet you only bang your big or small toe on the corners right here uh, as opposed to banging the entire foot. <laughs> uh, also I try to uh, maintain some sort of a universal look to it. So we know this front facing side of the front piece, uh, that width I assume to be 5 centimeters. And I transferred that into the side rails where um, I, I do need to take the into, consider into consideration the width of the front piece and then adjust the width of my side rail of the side piece so that the sum total becomes equal to the front face. And to make it clearer, let's do the measurements. Uh, that's kind of like backwards, but let's do it this way. Uh, so this is a five centimeter piece right here and I assumed it's going to be two centimeters for the thickness of the wood. Uh, so that means the remainder is three centimeters. Uh, now this is all going to be dependent on how I machine the wood and whether the wood is can get into two centimeters thickness. Sometimes it's more like 2.2. That's the maximum that I received so far. Uh, or it could be less, like 1.9 or 1.8. So this is going to be adjusted based on the thickness of the wood itself. Uh, similarly, the initial width might also vary depending on how I cut the wood and how much of the wood I want to preserve versus waste. And we're going to the cut list in a bit. Uh, so. So those are the measurements. And like I said, it is a smaller scale blanket box. It's only 72 centimeters by 46 at the lid level. And the lid has a little bit of a, a lip, if you want to call it that way. You can see it right here. Uh, otherwise, the footprint is 68 centimeters by 42 centimeters. Let me see if I can pan it a little bit. Yeah, there we are. Um, so, so that's basically a simple design. Uh, client approved it. Uh, it is slightly over their measurement in terms of the height and the depth, uh, but they okayed it, so everything is good for now. Uh, and the one thing that is good about uh, doing a drawing is you can simply switch between units in case uh, you're feeling more comfortable with either metric or imperial. So all I have to do is just go into inches units and that automatically converted everything into inches. Uh, obviously I'm more comfortable with centimeters, so this is what it's gonna stay at. The second reason for doing a drawing is about figuring out the materials. Uh, how much wood, how much plywood, the dimensions of each, uh, estimating the uh, amount that you want to buy at the store, knowing that there's going to be wastage, especially for the rough cut lumber where you have to machine it to get it to a nice smooth surface. Uh, that is also an important factor in creating a drawing. So I did such a uh, um, compilation right here. So I have the 
various locations on the blanket box. So we have the bottom, which is the very bottom of the blanket box right here, this piece right here. Uh, then we have the frame, which is all made of wood, and the frame is basically, oh, let me just hide the measurements. Uh, the frame is everything right here. So all those long pieces on the top and the bottom and the sides of each piece. So that's the frame that's made out of wood. The longer panels in between, those would be plywood, and they're kind of put right here. And of course, we have the lid. Uh, and this is how you estimate your uh, wood, how much wood you need. Uh, a little bit of an overage because you are going to waste some of it in terms of shavings. Uh, and then do the same thing for the plywood and then figure out how much of the plywood sheet you're going to use. Now that you have this, you can create the so-called cut list. And I have done two cut lists. One is with the plywood. And let me center it a little bit, go into edit mode uh, and do this. So yeah, so these are all the faces of the plywood sheet that I need to cut. Probably I need to move this piece over here because I see I'm kind of going over what my plywood sheet uh, dimensions are. Uh, and that kind of gives you a visu visual representation of what is going to be cut and what is going to be a waste. So that way you preserve as much of the material as possible and you don't waste any of it. Because we know now with rising prices and inflation, things are not getting cheap and you want to preserve as much as possible. I also did a similar cut list for the wood that I bought, but then that had to wait until I purchased the wood. Uh, and that's all because uh, the wood planks come in different widths and different lengths. So I kind of knew how much I needed. I bought that is something about roughly that size. And now with this cut list, and let me oops, zoom in, not zoom out. Uh, now I have an idea of where to cut and how to cut and whether that's going to be sufficient or not. So, so this is the concept. Now what I'm going to do is first do the wood, first machine the wood and get the final dimensions of the wood and then come back to my original drawing and adjust anything based on the dimensions of the wood. Uh, like I said, I uh, used five centimeters as the assumption for the side thickness of the, or the width of each piece right here. But in case it's slightly smaller, then I have to come back to the drawing, reduce it, and increase the size of the plywood sheet, and adjust the plywood sheet cutouts as well. So, so that's why it's important to have a drawing that you can easily manipulate. Now, without too much talking, let's get back to machining the wood. So the wood is machined based on the depth and the width and now it's time to figure out if there is any variances between the actual wood that I machined versus the original drawing that I did. And uh, I, I would say the answer right now is yes, there are. Um, I was thinking about the 5 centimeter width of the wood and I actually got 4.65. Uh, and some of my other rails and styles are a little bit narrower. So I'm going to go ahead and update my drawing and then I'm going to come up with the new measurements for the length. So let's go to Blender and fix that quickly. So as we can see, it was pretty easy to uh, get up the new measurements and update the graphic, and we immediately received the updated measurements. 
the one thing that I guess it's gonna I wouldn't say pain me or hurt me a lot but uh, it's not gonna be to my uh, particular liking is that I, I was hoping for a equal measurement of the uh, facing rails so we have the front one being 4.65 centimeters but the side ones the sum total becomes up to 4.35 so there is about a three millimeter difference uh, but that's okay uh, only the viewers of this video would be able to see it because they saw what i did and have the measurements uh, but i don't think the final client would actually care they just would like something nice uh, the other thing that I'm going to be doing is this particular piece of wood uh, had a little bit of an extra dip and this particular section of the wood is a little bit narrower than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that remainder piece of the wood for the panel and the two other pieces of wood attached together and I'm going to keep this for the leg and because it's tapering I'm just going to taper it a little bit like a one or two millimeter taper and I'm going to do that for all the legs, so it's going to be like I meant to do it, as opposed to the wood is a little bit crooked. Uh, so now that we have the final measurements, I am going to go ahead and cut the wood to length and also cut the plywood sheets. Everything is cut to size and have dry assembled them right in front of me just to see how they look and feel and if I need to make any adjustments. And I do see one minor thing that I need to take, a slight deviation of the 90 degree angle so I'm just gonna take that to the table so right after the video. In the meantime everything looks good and this brings an end to this week's video. In the next week's video we're gonna be looking at joinery and how we're gonna be gluing everything together. So first we're gonna glue everything individually and then all four sides together. So stay tuned for that. If you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe and also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video releases. Also, follow me on all social media channels and consider supporting me on Patreon. All the links are down in the description.